Today, the Lambeth Conference is back in Canterbury at the campus of the University of Kent with a two-theme day, looking first this morning at what it means to be Christians with other Christians, our relationships with other Christian churches, and what it means to be united together in mission. And then in the afternoon, looking at interfaith relation and how we relate to other faiths, how we seek the common good together. Christian unity has always been an important theme at all Lambeth conferences. It aims at inviting all of us brothers and sisters in Christ to be concerned with what's happening around the world and to be able to walk together, to work together and to live together in spite of our differences. And I have to say that this week I have lived through a wonderful experience being the Dean for our Ecumenical Guest. In the course of the Bible studies and in the Lambeth course, I could see their interest in supporting the old Church of God to be an instrument of grace, to be a light to the world. There was so much graciousness, mutual respect, but also a spirit of accountability that has prevailed. It rejoices me to see that today things have evolved. Divisions are there, but we can overcome these barriers by focusing on what is essential for Jesus Christ, his Lord and Saviour of all. It's very good that we are joined in this conference by bishops from churches that are now in communion with the Anglican Communion and also by representatives of churches and Christian bodies from which we remain still sadly divided, but with whom we're working uh, to bring about that unity which was Christ's prayer and is our calling. The sins of the past are alive and thriving in a modern world that dares to speak of human rights, justice and truth. While our politicians and world leaders speak out against these injustices, laws and other measures are rarely enacted to end the abomination and evil. It is therefore time for us as Christians to unify our efforts and to do what is required by God, to speak out against injustice and every evil. If this does not happen and we do not act as one, then we are not living to the fullest Christian potential and we have failed in our calling not only as Christians, but also as human beings. So the subject of interfaith relationships um, impacts on all of us here at the Lambeth Conference in one form or another and because we live in a pluralist world and our neighbours are made up of people of all faiths and none. Uh, and so it's a really important subject for us to engage with but of course our experiences are very diverse um, and it's important for us to hear from one another um, depending on our experiences to learn from one another um, to hear particularly the voices of those uh, who live as Christian minorities and are persecuted for their faith uh, and also to learn from those who are able to enter into positive dialogue and work more towards the common good. God's love and generous hospitality demonstrated through the inner life of the Trinity draws us in and sends us forth to do likewise. This is how generous love expresses it. And I quote, our pressing need to renew our relationships with people of different faiths must be grounded theologically in our understanding of the reality of the God who is Trinity. Father, Son and Spirit abide in one another in a life which is a dynamic, eternal and unending movement of self-giving. In our meeting with people of different faiths, we are called to mirror however imperfectly, this dynamic of sending and abiding. So our encounters lead us deeper into the very heart of God and strengthen our resolve for interfaith engagement. I 
another day at the Lambeth Conference of building relationships, of conversations, of reflecting together and listening to the stories of so many different ways of working with our ecumenical partners and working with others for the good of God's world. Our plenaries heard some moving stories of what it means to be Christians in different parts of the communion, even in parts where Christianity is a minority, sometimes a minority under duress. The Archbishop in Jerusalem talked to us profoundly of walking in the footsteps of Christ, physically and metaphorically, and left us with the challenge, what does it mean for all of us to walk in the footsteps of Christ in all our relationships, in our different contexts, in God's world? Music